Hello everyone, Madeline here again with day two of digital art and vinyl in our extravaganza range. So today I'm going to be showing you a lovely um, selection of home decor items that I made using our heat transfer vinyl and SVGs and some Cricut files as well as some fonts. This is an apron using the blue, white, pink and gold HTV and I've attached it to a 100% cotton apron and that went on really easily. This is a velvet cushion and I used the black shimmer vinyl and one of our HTV files, um, HTV, SVG files and um, that turned out really, really nice. This is another, um, this is a tea towel and that did say eat, sleep, craft, repeat and I just swapped out the word craft for cook because I'm going to be giving these to my sister um, for her Christmas present. So um, she's a fantastic cook and I really wanted to give these to her. So um, I also did the same thing with the apron. The apron said stamping makes everything better. And don't be afraid to change things out. I just took the word stamping out, kept the little heart for the eye and changed it to cooking. Um, which is what I did there. So just found a font that looked funky with that. Um, the um, SVG file there, I can totally make that on the um, mitten. And then I also made a lovely pot holder using some fonts from one of our Cricut cartridges. So the pot holder says too hot to handle. And I used a matte black for the two and the red shimmer for the hot. And that went on really easily. This next piece is a lovely chalkboard and I've used the white HTV and one of our lovely SVG files and that just really went on easily. That's quite a tricky one to cut out. There's lots of fine detail in that SVG but um, yeah, it was cut very, very easily and as I said before, it weeded really easily. Getting all those little pieces out was very easy. Here's another chalkboard piece. This was a sign for the laundry self-service, laundry, wash, dry, fold, repeat, and another one for the laundry, clean and single, looking for my perfect match. Um, these were just from Kmart, these chalkboards, and I attached some pegs um, to this chalkboard with some liquid glass, and they're stuck on permanently. Um, that was nice and easy. So to make these, I just, these two pieces were made using fonts on my hard drive, whereas the maker's gonna make was an SVG file, but um, don't be afraid to play around with your fonts. Um, if you see something on Pinterest that you like, it's really easy to copy them. So whereas this one's an image, these are actually text fonts. So self-serve was one font, laundry, wash, dry, fold, repeat was another. And then I repeated the same font for open 24 hours as, in the, as the self-serve. So very, very easily. I just played around with the fonts, then grouped them all together and cut the white heat, tran heat transfer vinyl. Um, this was exactly the same thing. I'd seen that on Pinterest and just, yeah, chose some fonts that were suitable and cut them out. It was very, very easy um, yeah, to do. So don't be scared to play around with things that you see on Pinterest. Here are some pot holders. So these were two cork um, pot holders that I got from a local store, very, very inexpensive. That's one of our background files from a Cricut, I think it's art booking, and I cut it out of the white HTV. And of course, because it is heat transfer vinyl, the pot is not going to be um, affecting that when you put a hot pot on it. This one is the one I'm going to demonstrate later on today, I think. I haven't quite decided, but um, yeah, I think I'll be demonstrating this one later on today. That is just a series of words with all different fonts um, all mixed together um, and yeah, attached to the cork. This is one of my favorite pieces. Um, it's all about the cheese, wine and good times. And at the moment after coronavirus and lockdown, I think we all need a good night together. I've used an SVG file there for the glasses and two different um, types of HTV the black shimmer and the red shimmer. They attach to the wood very, very easily. I did, um, just if you have a look at the word V at the end there, it's a bit crooked. I hadn't quite a, um, heated, heated that up enough. So um, when I was playing around with it, I didn't realize it hadn't stuck. So 
do be careful. Make sure that all your pieces have stuck down before you um, yeah, move on to your next piece. And this um, cheese board can still be used. Um, the back is there, has no vinyl on it, so that can still be um, washed and it will still, um, the heat transfer will stay attached. The next piece is um, a linen bin um, that you could use for toys or pieces of, um, you know, things in your lounge room. And that's the matte black HGV that attached very, very nicely to the linen. Um, I was really pleased with that. I just got it to lay flat on my board when I was heating it up, um, but it did attach very nicely. Um, so you could do a series of those for children's room. This is um, an interesting one. This is actually not a HTV. This is just black shimmer cardstock. And when I cut this out, um, I was just thinking, oh no, I've got to pick up all those individual pieces and it's going to be a nightmare. So what I decided to do was remove the out outer piece of the paper, the negative space. And I took some of our, oh, well, it's not, uh, we don't sell it in our range, but it was just clear contact. And I attached it to the um, the whole mat, whole Cricut mat. Because this is glitter paper, glitter cardstock, it didn't actually stick firmly to the contact because it's shimmery. And that allowed me to lift it all off my mat in one go. Then I turned it over, glued all the pieces on the back, and then brought it over to the inside cover of my album and pressed it down and then slowly peeled away the clear contact and it just attached beautifully. So that's one of the smaller uh, six by six Stacey Julian albums. Um, that's one, I think I did this at convention with Stacey, Stacey. and um, yeah, it's just all about my close to my heart career, my friends that I've made, consultants, um, as well as customers and all the adventures we've been on and I just thought that was perfect just a woman building her crafty empire perfect for that little album here's some a set of six coasters that I made um, so that is a um, an SVG file there craft queen um, in the glitter as you can see that's my favorite <laughs> the black glitter that's uh these two are um, Cricut files this was just a font and an SVG file and this one matches in with the cheese board so you could give that as a gift um, so some coasters and a cheese board that would be just lovely just cork coasters very very easy to do um, so yeah so that's um, some of the pieces that I made I did actually make one other thing which I think you're all gonna love so when we are allowed to travel <laughs> And um, and get out into the into the air and fly. This is my suitcase, and normally I tie a big bow on top of it, but I do not need to do that anymore. I use HTV, and I found some SVG files that I love, which was off we go and travel the world, and I personalised my gigantic suitcase, and um, I was really pleased with the end result. When I thought of it, I just couldn't wait to get. <laughs> At doing it and it really stuck very very well that's not coming off um, so yeah that was just a really fun piece so I want to see all your suitcases when we go to convention next all personalized with SVG <laughs> and heat transfer vinyl so that's the collection for today home decor pieces I hope they inspire you now we're gonna do a little tutorial so I'm gonna swap over to my overhead camera and my Cricut um, design space um, and I think I'm going to show you how to make this one. I think I'll do the cork board. So let's move on to our Cricut design space. So here we are in design space. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is insert a background piece to give me an idea of what size I'm going to be doing all those words. So I've just chosen a shape from the bottom, just a square. I'm resizing it to the size of my cork mat, which was, I think, seven and a half. And um, that way, when I put the words on, I'm just going to use it as a template. Obviously, I'm not going to cut that out. Um, I'm just going to yeah resize it to the exact size of the mat that I'm going to be putting it on. So what I also like to do is color it to the color of the piece I'm going to be using. So I just gave it a cork sort of color. 
Um, and that way, when I'm putting the letters on, if it looks right, I'll keep going. If it doesn't look right, I might change the colour of the vinyl. So all I've done with this, it was very, very simple. I just chose random fonts from my font file. And as I typed each word, I just thought of all different words that you use in the kitchen when you're making breakfast. Um, I think I did forget toast, actually. <laughs> I looked back over this video and it's like, oh, how did I forget toast? But here I am. I'm just choosing a font, a random font. Um, I generally choose close to my heart fonts because I do like them and they're nice and clear and bold and they cut well. And then once I've inserted that, I then type in the word. I did use capitals for all of this. You can mix it up and use lowercase, uppercase, have a capital at the beginning, not at the end. Um, and then I just went ahead and chose a whole series of words. And once I had them all selected, as you see, the words will come on. I just started positioning them on the background to see how they were going to look and played around with sizing i actually um unlock the ratio with words and that way you can make them tall skinny um whatever you wish whatever fits in the space and it does take a little bit of playing around to get the words to fit i also like to make sure that they align at the top at the bottom at the left and at the right and that does take a bit of messing around but as you can see here I'm already probably halfway through and it's taken me just a couple of minutes. So it's a matter of just thinking up the words, really. That's the hardest part sometimes is finding the words you want to put on them. But I've seen these for sale in quite a few online shops and in a local gift shop. And they were, they were you know, around $20, $25. And I thought, well, I'm sure I can make that. <laughs> and once again, because we are using heat transfer vinyl, once it's attached to the cork, it is heat resistant. You're going to be able to put a, a hot pot on it and it's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, so uh, if you see something in a home decor shop or online, don't be afraid to go into your local discount shop, maybe a $2 shop or I use Kmart quite often. Um, I did buy all of these online while we were in lockdown. I had lots of fun shopping online. <laughs> and deliveries every day um, but it was fun yeah so don't be afraid to to try and copy them it's really fun and it's you feel really great once you've finished and you say well I made that as you can see um, design space will automatically align things for you it's really a great feature so um, yeah once I got enough words on there I then started um, unlocking the ratio which is that little lock that you can see in between oh, it's on the left bottom left hand corner of your word and um, yep so I'm just stretching the words moving them around so I think I've got all my words now and um, it's time to start aligning everything and getting everything lined up perfectly so that once you cut these this piece it all cuts out um, perfectly so it's, it's never you know you can never spend too much time um, spacing things out and just being really fussy with this last little bit so i use the um auto align so you'll see the yellow lines coming up on my piece as cricut design space does the snap to align um which is really good so if you select a couple of words you'll see there it just snaps it to the left or snaps it to the center and then i'm going to move my background out of the way so that i can um, select a group of words then use the auto align and um, align to the left then I'll just move that background out of the way again and align the words on the right hand side so that they are nicely aligned now don't panic if you um, have oversized it um, you can always um, cut those words out separately and put them onto your piece but it is always nice as I said, if they're, if they're all lined up correctly. But it is much easier if you've just um, attached them as one item and then cut them in one go. And then when you're laying it over your cork mat, it's just one piece. 
um, but it's not not a disaster don't panic if you do find that it's too big you can always um, position it so here I am just um, fiddling around now really just getting it um, to the size that I want so we're just about finished now I'm really just tweaking this now just to make sure it's lined up and I'm going to check to see in a minute how it's going to look when I cut it out now these words are all individual words I just type them in separately so when we send this image to the mat what we'll find is that they're going to just go random <laughs> they go wherever they want to on the mat but I actually will want them to be lined up so I'll do a little test um, to see how they look on the mat um, before I cut them so down in the bottom it says make it so I'm going to send this image to make it and you'll see the words are scrambled. So what we need to do now is attach them together. So we need to select all of the words, go down to action and attach. And that puts all the words together into one image. And so when we send it to the mat to make it, they now all appear in the order that we want them to on the, on the cutting mat. Now I'll just quickly check um, how that looks, play around with any adjustments that I need to make and once I'm happy with it I will be able to send that to the mat. So I'm still aligning things here, still playing around with um, some of the words and the letters and it really, it really is important that you do this because at the end of the day once you've made it um, you want to be really proud of it and you want to love it and you don't want to keep looking at it going oh I wish I had just made that word hash browns a little bit bigger. <laughs> So I'm going to just unattach them and I will select the word hash brown. I'm just zooming in on that word because I can see that it's just a bit short of the, um, the left hand margin. So I'm going to just tweak that and make it a little bit wider and that way and then I'll center it and I'll be much happier with the finished product when I um, look at it. So um, yeah, I'm just adjusting it here aligning it with the left hand side there so that it does line up with the word bacon and tea and um, it's far more centered. Now we'll need to attach them all again. So I will um, move the background out of the way and select all. So there is a really easy way to move that background. We'll just go to the right hand side there and just turn the eye off. So you can see there's a down the bottom there's an eye, you can switch it on and off. And that way, once we switched it off, it won't go to the mat. So now that I've switched it off, I can select all. I've just dragged my mouse over them and attach them to each other. And I'm ready to send it to my mat. So now it's ready. It's actually ready to go. Now, the only thing I need to do now is make sure that when I cut it, I cut it in the right way. So as you can see now, it's all the, all the words are facing me and you can read them left to right we need to mirror the image. If you don't mirror the image when you're cutting heat transfer vinyl, it won't work. So you must mirror the image. So I've got actually a sticker on my Cricut machine that says heat transfer vinyl, mirror the image. <laughs> um, you also put the nice side of the vinyl down. So mine say, my sign says pretty side down, mirror the image. So just need to really make sure we do that. So now we're ready to send it to our Cricut machine. So I hit the continue, my Cricut Air comes up because I'm Bluetoothing from my tablet and it's ready to go. Now we need to, with our dial being on custom, you must make sure your dial is on custom um, on your Cricut machine and we're going to select our um, material. So the, um, you can select all materials there in green and there are so many to choose from. So I actually use that little star on the right hand side to select my favorites. So you can see which ones are my favorites, Everyday Iron On. And I also have, I think, Glitter Vinyl selected and a few others. Um, so we're just scrolling down until we come to the vinyl section. And um, I always select um, either premium vinyl or glitter vinyl and um, you can see their premium vinyl. And they're the two settings I use for the close to my heart vinyls. Um, and now we're ready to go. So let's now move on to our overhead camera 
and we will start cutting our vinyl. So this is our vinyl, the white vinyl, and that shiny side is basically like a carrier sheet and that's um, carrying your vinyl and the vinyl is on the other side. So the matte silky looking side is your actual vinyl and that's what we're going to cut and the shiny gloss carrier sheet goes face down on your mat. So I always like to use my um, scraper um, to really press that down. If you've got a roller, a wheel roller, you could do that as well. But I always like to make sure that it's really um, attached to my mat um, before I put it into the Cricut machine. And I use a green mat because they're lovely and sticky. You really need your vinyl to be well attached to the mat. So now the Cricut machine is flashing. We're ready to load the mat. I've loaded it up underneath those um, guides and it's attached to my wheels. And I always quickly before I cut check that my blade is clean. I do cut a lot of glitter um, paper so there's quite often glitter attached to my blade. So I'll give it a clean with a, um, a paintbrush and then the light is flashing and ready for me to load my mat. And that's going to start cutting. So we'll let the, the Cricut machine cut our vinyl and um, it does click away like a Cricut. <laughs> Um, and this is going to take a couple of minutes so we'll speed up the video and come back to my Cricut machine once the light starts flashing to say it's ready to unload um, so it's finished magic <laughs> and now I'm going to trim down my vinyl so you can see that it's cut it's quite clear where it cut on the mat and um, because vinyl um, isn't the most inexpensive product I do keep all my scraps um, so I just take a steel ruler and while it's on my mat um, I will use just the blade of my scissors to score the vinyl um, and that shows me where I can cut it um, and that way when I start weeding it's not going to um, pull off the carrier sheet any of the vinyl that I want to reuse so by scoring cutting through with the um, blade of my scissors I will be able to then um, save those pieces for another another project and um, I have to say I really um, hardly waste any vinyl at all so I'm just going to fold that and cut it it cuts very easily obviously our scissors are fantastic um, so they'll cut through the the carrier sheet very easily and um, the vinyl on the back has been scored by my scissors when I ran them across the ruler so those pieces will go into my bag of white vinyl pieces. Um, I do keep them in their bag um, and it does make it really easy to find them. Some of the vinyl looks very similar to cards to, to glitter cardstock, so I do keep them in their own bag because it um I'd hate to stick a piece of vinyl in when I was cutting, <laughs> um, wanting to cut cardstock. So here's the bag with all my little pieces. And um, they will get used trust me okay so now we're ready to weed and I'm going to use um, the Cricut weeding tool and you'll see how easy it is so all I'm doing basically is pulling the vinyl away from that carrier sheet and once you um, get a good hold of it you'll see how easily it comes away so it's not as hard as our um, shaker card windows for instance it, it actually comes away much easier than that so all I'm going to do now is work my way along the top of the piece pulling the excess vinyl away from the cut vinyl um, and I'm going to keep my letters on that sticky sticky carrier sheet it is really sticky trust me um, it will take the skin off the tips of your fingers if you're not careful um, but yeah, once I, once I get the top completely um, lifted, I'll start pulling down and I pull quite flat. I keep my hand um, sort of running across the table um, and it will come away. And then I'll use my um, weeding tool just to lift up the bottom of the letters. As I get to the next row of words, um, it's going to need to just be um, lifted up between the bottom of the letters. So it's very, as you can see, 
this vinyl cuts so well in the Cricut machine. Honestly, I have never had ever a problem cutting this vinyl. It really is the best quality vinyl that I've used. And I've used a couple of dodgy um, brands of vinyl in the past. Um, that don't weed like this. This literally takes just a few minutes um, to take that negative space away from the words. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just using that um, weeding tool just to lift those letters, those um, that vinyl away from those letters. So I'm just checking now that I've got everything. Um, I'm going to put it on my cork mat just to make sure there's no pieces left. Um, I can see there's a bit left in that letter A. And then I'm going to start aligning it. So as you can see, it has lined up really, really well um, with my cork mat. I probably should have turned my camera the other way. Actually, I'll remember that for tomorrow. Tomorrow's video will be better. <laughs> I'll turn the camera around the correct way. Okay, so I'm just moving away all those little extra pieces. Do not get them anywhere near your finished project because, yes, once they're attached, that's it. The, the, heat, the heat press will firmly affix them. I've used my, yeah, just those two tools, my tweezers and my um, weeding tool. And I'm just now making sure that it is lined up correctly. As I said before, if it wasn't, I could cut those words out and just, you know, manually attach them. So you can use either an iron to attach this. I put it on your hottest setting and make sure there is no water in your iron, no steam allowed. Um, a large heat press is good, but that's going to be too big for this project. So I'm going to use my little mini. I've got to say this little mini is the best purchase ever. I love it. I absolutely love it. I put it on the lowest setting. It takes but a minute to heat up. And um, while that's heating, I'll just line my piece up and make sure that it's um, fitting in all the, the corners, making sure it's not overlapping anywhere that there's, um, it's nice and straight. Because once I, what I'm gonna do is put the heat press in the middle of my vinyl, just to get it um, sort of semi, like tack it on almost, by just heating it up a little bit. So I'm just making sure I've got the right side down and um, there's nothing underneath it, it's, it's nice and clean. And um, yeah. So I'm going to put my heat mat underneath it. I have a couple of sizes heat of heat mats. I have a small one, which is great for small children's clothing or small pieces um, or the big one. And you can also, if you wanted to, um, overlay either greaseproof paper or Teflon, a Teflon sheet. Now I might use that on um, some nice fabric, but I wouldn't on this. I just um, really just go straight on with the heat press. So it's now turned green. I'm gonna start in the middle and push out. And I'm not pushing down hard at all. I'm letting the heat do all the work. I'm letting my iron just run over the plastic. And as the carrier sheet heats up, the vinyl underneath will heat up and become sticky and attach to the cork. So just be patient, just gently rub over the whole piece, pushing from the sort of the center out to the edges. You won't get any crinkles. Um, I've never had a crinkle on a flat piece before. Oh, touch wood, you know it's gonna happen tomorrow now, don't you? <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going right around to the edges, making sure that I touch all of those letters and um, then I'll do a little test in a second to see if it's attached. So yeah, just rubbing over each of the letters nice and gently, letting the heat do the work. Um, and once I think I've gone over it all, I'll do a little test peel. And if I feel that any of the pieces are lifting, um, it does say to, to cool peel with cork. Um, but once I'm happy, so I'll just have a test. So there you can see the white is still lifting, didn't quite attach. So I'll go over it one more time just to make sure that all of those pieces have um, have safely attached to the cork. Cork and vinyl are very, very good friends, I've got to tell you. Um, I just have really enjoyed making these home decor pieces and I want to see lots of projects. I want to see you all rushing out to Kmart and buying yourself some home decor pieces and start using those SVGs um, because they really are so much fun. Um, so this piece is nearly finished, ladies. Um, so now I'm just going to cool it down a little bit. It is very hot. You can burn yourself. Be very, very careful. That plastic heats up 
um, pretty quickly but that's why I just use that lower setting on my heat press mini and um, yep so now I'm gonna very very carefully and slowly peel away from the corner and I do it very very low I keep my plastic quite low down I don't pull it up I pull it across so um, away from the corner I started on and as you can see I roll that up now and that's going to be that when I weed next time that's going to be where I stick all those little pieces so um, I just roll that up and keep that to one side and that's going to be where I attach all my little bits of um, vinyl that come off my next piece so I'm going to give it a once over I've just put the um, grease proof paper down and I'm just going to give it a once over just to make sure that everything's attached nice and gently no pressure there at all I'm just letting the heat do the work and we are nearly done so I hope you've enjoyed that um, that's it's been a lovely project um, and as you can see those letters have attached you can see all the fonts you can see all the words um, and it just looks really great so um, I hope that was a, a fun project for you all and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day three